This week is going to be interesting with some hopefully very fun projects. We're going to try and finish the water tanks by putting the hatches on the top and then pressure testing the water tanks. If that goes well, then we'll get to continue working on the galley and hopefully get some counters on by the end of the week. My name is Matt. Follow along as I turn Duracell, the legendary ocean racing sailboat, into a comfortable cruising home. The inboard side of the galley was mostly done and I was anxious to get the outboard side cabinet boxes installed, which includes the freezer and stove area. Once that stuff is installed, the water tanks will be less accessible, so we first needed to finish them, and that means building more access hatches. Riley and his friend Brandon came over to help with this project. After the first round of hatches on the lower tanks, I had a pretty good idea for how to finish them quickly. With three of us, we were able to finish all eight of the upper access hatches in an afternoon. They drilled 10 holes per hatch using a template. The holes only go through the top layer of glass and down through the foam, but not through the bottom layer. Then they used a hole saw with the pilot bit to start a larger three quarter inch hole and then took out the pilot bit and drill, again drilled down to the bottom layer of glass, but not through it. Finally, they used some pliers to pull out the core, leaving a really nice little pot to be filled with epoxy. It was important that the hatch was centered perfectly over the access hole and the pots. So we used reference marks and hot glued blocks around the perimeter of the hatch so that when we set the hatch down for the last time on the epoxy, it was exactly in the right position. The holes were filled with thickened epoxy using a syringe to make sure that no air was trapped inside the holes. The hatches and bolts were waxed really well to make sure that the hatch comes apart easily once the epoxy cures, and the threaded inserts were threaded onto the bolts. Once all this was ready to go, the perimeter of the hole was lubed with a bunch of epoxy, and the hatch with the bolt was put in place with weights to press as much epoxy out as possible. So you can see that with the bolts and threaded inserts pressed into the thickened epoxy and the epoxy curing around the bolt, we are casting the threads that are reinforced with threaded inserts into the tank and casting the surface that the gasket will seal against. Riley, Brandon, and I got all eight done in about five hours of work and I'm very happy with how these turned out. A couple weeks ago, we water tested the tanks to make sure that there were no leaks, and we found one, but we have since fixed it, we think. The next thing to do is pressure test them. And I'm doing this to kind of double check that there are no leaks, and also to test these upper uh, access port hatches, inspection hatches that we just installed. This is my pressure test mechanism. It has a little pressure gauge on it, and a valve so we can put it up to pressure and then close the valve. And then this third thing is a mistake I made. I accidentally drilled the hole when I shouldn't have and put this barb on it and the hose and I'll just close off the hose. So I'm gonna use my vacuum pump and just use the outlet side of my vacuum pump, which should bring it up to pressure. If this doesn't work, then I'll just hook it up to my air compressor and just do it very, very, very slowly. I think that this vacuum pump will work, but I'm not sure, we'll see. I've never used it in this fashion before, so. Once it's up to pressure, we will close the valve and try and hold that pressure. Hopefully it will hold one and a half or two PSI or whatever we bring it up to for a day. We'll take the squirt gun with the soapy water, go around the tank and see if there's any bubbles coming out. Yeah, that's it, hopefully it works. Are you nervous? 
Uh, no, not really. Now that I know, like the water test was that, that was a big one. And so I'm feeling a lot really confident about these tanks now. <sighs> We've closed the valve that's on, that's the inlet to the tank. It's a ball valve and we've turned off the pump. And so, and it, we closed it at one and a half PSI. We're going to just let it. So right now the tank is sealed. So we're just going to let it sit and watch the pressure. And if it goes down or if we find some bubbles coming out from our, from spraying soapy water on it, then we'll find a leak. But if it just holds at one and a half PSI, then we've got a sealed tank. And so far, so good. The tank pressure held steady at one and a half PSI for a couple hours, and we called it good. It was a huge success. There were no leaks in any of the hatches, and now I'm feeling very confident to go ahead and finish the galley around the tank. I got a lot of recommendations from friends and from the comments for us to use foil on the new freezer. This is a radiant heat barrier and should help a little towards keeping the freezer as efficient as possible. So I bought some sticky back foil from Amazon and my mom meticulously wrapped the entire freezer box. and now it was ready to install permanently. I had to drop the freezer in a couple times before it was ready to go, but now it's in there for good. While I was building the cabinet boxes on the outboard side, I realized I was short one piece of flat stock to build the last box. I needed to cut out this section of the cabinet anyway, which is the outside of the blind corner. I'm going to build a large bank of drawers here so I cut out the area so I didn't have to laminate another piece of foam. This bulkhead splits the water tank in half, and it's where I had the leak last week. It's going to be integrated into the galley cabinetry as one side of one of the boxes. So to fill out the rest of the side of the box, I templated it and cut out this piece, glued it into the existing bulkhead, and then laminated it in place. Eventually, some drawers will be attached to this wall. So I'm finishing these cabinet boxes that are going to be around the stove and I've been working on something that has come up in the comments quite a few times and that is how screws and bolts are going to be used around this foam. 
Now the problem with this foam is that it's very compressible, it's uh, very shreddable, like if I put just a screw into the foam, I could just pull it straight out, it'll just tear the foam out. And if I crank down on a bolt with the foam, it'll just compress the foam. The fiberglass does a little bit to hold it in place, but it will inevitably just crunch the foam. It's not nearly as good as plywood, for instance, in holding itself together when it comes to bolts and screws. And so in this case, what I'm doing, there is an inspection hatch right below or this, this cabinet box wall is splitting this inspection hatch right in half. And so if I ever need to get into that inspection hatch, I wouldn't be able to with this wall here. And so I want to make the wall removable. So what I did is I glued a couple pieces of this uh, fiberglass angle to the tank and I'm going to be installing little like bushings, like epoxy bushings into the this wall to make it boltable to those angle pieces. So right now I've got the angle pieces glued on there and I've drilled holes through the angle into the foam and that's to indicate where I need to put the bushings. And so I'm gonna do that now. So I've got my holes made, and usually I would mix up some thickened epoxy, but there's only five of them, so instead I'm just going to use uh, my handy dandy 6-0 from Total Boat and just fill these up and let it cure, and tomorrow I can come back and drill holes through the pots or the bushings that will receive the bolt. And so then I just have this nice hard area for a bolt to not compress the fiberglass. So, here we go. Last night we filled these little pots with the uh, thickened epoxy and let it cure overnight. And so I think it's cured enough. We're gonna use the drill press, press to drill the holes out and then I can install it with some nuts and bolts. So there's the pot with the hole in it and so now that area where I put the bolt through will not compress when I clamp it down with the bolts. So I just cut out the first side of the countertop that will go in the galley. This is just a millimeter countertop and we're just using this as kind of a work counter for now. In a while, many months, we'll cut out the real countertop and finish it but for now this will just be a really great place to get work done, replace my old table that was in the boat and also see how it feels to have the counter in the galley. So, taking this first piece up.
got this inboard piece cut out. So I'm gonna go and cut out this outboard piece. I'm excited to see how it looks. Hey you, what you doing? I gotta cut a little bit off. My, I, my measurements aren't always right. I think that this bulkhead that I put in is not like perfectly square to the boat. And so um, I just gotta do a little trimming on this end and make it fit. It is pretty cool. I'm doing this because I basically am sick of working inside. And there's so much left to do in this galley as far as like fiberglass and finishing everything. And uh, there's over the next couple months, a lot is happening uh, as far as other projects and things that have to be done. And so I'm gonna quit working on the interior and start working outside like tomorrow. So. Uh, You've got spring fever. I've got spring fever. I'm sick of working inside, working on, yeah, on this interior stuff. And I'm excited to go outside. It's been so nice out and. Uh, you also look like you're trying to get in contact with aliens. <laughs> Pick up some radio signals. But this is pretty cool. So one change I made is the stove is going to go in the middle here now. And so uh, there will be banks of drawers on either side of the stove. I think that makes a lot more sense. And don't forget the sink is going to go here. There will be the freezer over here. And again, remember the floor is going to be raised. It feels really big right now. And I think once the floors are raised up, it won't feel so big. I'll be anxious to hear what you guys think. What do you think? And how do you like it? I love it. It's, um, yeah, I mean, obviously the counters are, are high. Like they're going to be, I know they'll be seven inches lower, but it's so nice. I love having the like the big high ceilings of the doghouse here. You know, for the viewer, it's about what three feet between the top of my head and the top of the doghouse. I think it's more. More four feet maybe. It just feels so open um, and airy and light and huge. This is a huge galley, honey. Is it too big? No. I love it. I really love it. So is that overhang, is that how the final overhang will be? Uh, on this outboard side, it's like four inches. And I was just, I made it this big just to see what it would feel like. Again, I don't know if you remember back when we were talking about the design of this, we were thinking about putting a bar on this side. And this is kind of my compromise, is just to see what a little extra overhang would feel like for people hanging out and stuff. But uh, I don't know. Again, these are not the finished counters. We are just going to use this as a working surface for now. We're gonna sit on the design a little bit. I do feel like it's a little bit big. And as far as the galley, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to finish it this week or if I'm gonna get back to working outside. It's getting really nice outside and I'm really looking forward to finishing the inside, 
for the winter and getting back outside for the summer. First, thank you to Carl and Angela who live on the Isle of Lewis out in the Hebrides of Scotland, the outer islands of Scotland. They are retired and spend their time watching storms. It sounds super gorgeous out there. and Maybe one day we'll get out there cruising. Also, thank you to Mike, who's from Vancouver, BC. Has done tons and tons of racing on all kinds of boats. Does all the local, has done all the local races, the big ones like uh, Swiftsure and the Van Isle and even the Vic Maui. And uh, him and his brother attempted the Northwest Passage um, it doesn't always happen, but it's always fun to do an attempt. Sounds like they had a great time doing it. Uh, thank you to Ben, who's from the Seattle area. He grew up sailing his dad's Cal 25, and he sent these really awesome pictures of his, uh, his own inspector. Thank you to Joe, who uh, is out in the Chesapeake Bay. He was a marine engineer and has been sailing his whole life, it sounds like. Now he and his wife sail... Uh, and Aloha 32 around the Chesapeake Bay. And lastly, thank you to Rick, who is a new sailor. He took lessons a few years ago and just bought himself a McGregor 25. So thank you very, 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 very much to everybody who's been supporting our channel.